Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from the YouTube channel Redolescence. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate that, my friends. And in today's video, we're going to be going over the top 10 weirdest looking fragrance slash perfume slash cologne bottles that I have in my collection. So stay tuned. Now, I just sort of wanted to make this list just kind of something fun, something uh, lighthearted, something whimsical. I was thinking of some bottles that I have in my collection. I'm like, man, that's a really weird bottle. I would love to feature that in a video of some sorts in the future. And here we are. It finally came to fruition. So these are fragrances, and we're not going to be talking about the smell of these fragrances, right? We're just solely going to be focusing on the way that they look. I think they look really weird, some of them. Some of them look kind of cool, but they don't look like your traditional fragrance bottles. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into the list. There is one fragrance that I wanted to feature in this list and uh, without me knowing, my wife took it with her the other night when she came here in the quote unquote studio and it's a fragrance that she's been wanting to wear this summer and so she took it with her. It's by Moschino and it's called uh, I Love Love, I think. It, it looks like Olive from Popeye. So um, yeah, I think that's a pretty weird bottle. But the number 10 fragrance that I'm going to feature in this list, I don't currently own. I was thinking of purchasing it just for the purpose of featuring it in this list, but I figured I might as well save my money. And it's by Moschino that has a reputation for making really weird bottles. And it's called Toy. It looks like a teddy bear. It's wearing a t-shirt that has the infamous, um, or famous rather, uh, Moschino saying, this is not a toy. And in order to use the fragrance, you have to decapitate the bear. So yeah. That's number 10. So coming in at number nine on this list is one from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. I reviewed this one. It's actually a, a fairly pleasant scent. And this one is called Scandal. I think that's a pretty unique looking uh, bottle. I know a lot of people out there might say it looks kind of kitschy or it looks weird or unusual. And yeah, all of the above, sure. But I think it's kind of cool. And it's one that you can instantly recognize on the shelves. You know, I was going to feature Ultraviolet Man by Paco Rabanne, which kind of looks like a black light. I also wanted to feature One Million in this list, uh, which looks like a, a gold bar, right? A gold bullion. Um, but I, feature, I, I decided that I have other fragrances in this collection that are far weirder. So let's get into my number eight. My number eight is from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier, and this one is called Cocorico. And the name is weird. It is kind of a cool bottle. It has the double entendre of the male profile. So here it looks like the profile of someone's face. And then when you turn it like this, it looks like the Lamal bottle. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, the smell is also awesome. Underrated, not too many people talk about it. It has fig leaf and cocoa. It's gourmand, it's powdery, it's chocolatey. Um, I wish more people talked about it. I really like Coco Rico. I know a lot of people say it's a flop, and it was on a commercial level, but in terms of the smell, I think it's a really, really nice smell. The next one on this list is by Victor and Rolf, and it's a really unique bottle, uh, very, very bulky. And I was having a conversation with my mother the other day, and she goes, you know, I don't really like, or she said rather, uh, feminine fragrances or bottles of women's perfume are typically tall and narrow so that people can grab them with ease. And I said, oh really, what about this one? <laughs> and she just sort of laughed. But this is by Victor and Rolf and it's called Bon Bon. Very hard to get a good grip on this one. You really have to stretch your fingers. Um, nice distribution though. And it, yeah, so there's the bottle for this one. Kind of looks like a Bon Bon candy or a bow tie or whatever but um, doesn't even fit here, so I'm gonna have to move it here a little bit. It has a sweetness to it, and you can kind of expect that, kind of along the lines of product candy. Doesn't smell similar, but it's in the same olfactory family. The next one on this one is, uh, every time I show it to people, they're like, what is that supposed to be? And I think this was inspired by horses, right? But um, kind of looks a little bit like bondage. So <laughs> this one from the house of uh, D squared is called Wild. So I picked this fragrance up because it's a composition by Anik Minardo, who is a perfumer that I have a lot of respect for. And I've spoken to other perfumers that have shared experiences that they've had with her. And everybody has said that she's a total sweetheart. Hopefully, you know, it's on my bucket list to meet her one day. And I'm sure she's an incredible person. This next fragrance, um, I reviewed it a while ago. I fell out of love with it. 
it's very light and uninspiring. I don't care for it too much, but it's still a pretty unique bottle, and so I'm featuring it in this list. This one by Atzado is called Now. You never hear anybody talk about this. Uh, it looks like a massage toy or an adult toy or something like that. Yeah, so it's kind of weird. Distribution on this one is pretty good too. Um, just gonna squeeze that in there on the corner. All right, so the next one on this list actually smells phenomenal. I love this scent. I have two bottles of it. And my wife, yeah, she's been wearing it a little bit lately. My mother really likes this one as well. This one by Carolina Herrera is called Good Girl. Really, really unique bottle, looks like a stiletto, and it also has a fantastic sprayer. I know people uh, leave comments on my videos saying they cringe whenever I spray it. It's all right, I have so many fragrances in my collection, I'm never gonna be able to use everything. I know I could easily decant and try to recoup some of my losses, but it's all right. It's supposed to be fun, right? It's a hobby, it's a passion of mine, so, you know, Whenever I have friends who come over and they visit my studio and they see my fragrances, they say, you know, um, do you mind if I spray that? Do you mind if I, and I tell them, listen, I brought you here because I want you to try anything and everything. And um, you know, I try to share as much as I can when it comes to my fragrances. So number three on this list is a weird bottle indeed. And this one by the company Melanie Martinez. And uh, this one is called Crybaby and it actually looks like a bottle. Um, believe it or not, um, yeah, I had this on the table the other day and my daughter was here and she actually tried to use it as a baby would a bottle. And when you look on the back here, even the color of the liquid has a cloudy appearance so that it kind of looks like milk. Very unique, you just unscrew the cap like this. Awesome smells so good. This is supposed to smell like strawberry milk. So it has a lactonic feel. It has a fruitiness about it. The fruitiness doesn't linger too long, but all in all, this is an awesome scent. So at the end of the day, as you know, kitschy or gaudy or whatever adjective you want to use, uh, you know, you think the bottle is, it smells awesome. And it's totally unisex. Number two on this list. Um, oh man, all the spraying actually made the table a little dirty. Let me try to clean it up a little bit. Oh no, sorry about that. It's not actually a bottle of Windex. It's a fragrance and this is by Moschino and it's called Fresh. It smells great. Um, Carlos, I have a bone to pick with you. He came over my house. He dropped this on the floor. Doesn't spray anymore. So Carlos, I'll forward you the bill. Thank you, buddy. And <laughs> just kidding. So um, it's pleasant. It's light. It's fresh. It's um, even the label on the back is constructed the same way that a label on a bottle of like Mr. Clean would be constructed in terms of the typeface and the bullets and everything on the back. Really, really weird bottle. So number one, I wonder if anybody can guess what my number one pick is. Weird bottles that I have in my collection. So my number one pick is a fragrance that truth be told, it smells pleasant. It's light, it's youthful, it's feminine, it's flirty, it's sweet. It borders gourmand, but it still has enough of a floral presence. It is a really weird bottle. I don't think I could ever wear it. No, it's not the new Kim Kardashian bottle. Although, if I had that, I'd probably feature that in this video as well. Although, it is another female celebrity. And this one, by Nicki Minaj, is called Menajesty. So, very much like Toy by Moschino, if you want to use it, you do have to decapitate the bottle. If you're asking me why I have this in my collection, I don't really know what to say. Um, I think it is a nice scent. If you're looking for something, uh, you know, perhaps if your daughter or somebody that you know uh, that you're purchasing the fragrance for happens to be a fan of Nicki Minaj, then I think you should go ahead and do it. I know she has some other fragrance offerings that you might want to check out but it's actually well put together. It smells pleasant. Um, nice distribution on this one as well. I think in terms of the fragrance, it smells awesome. Um, not something that I would personally wear, of course, but it is a solid release despite the fact that the bottle looks kind of weird. So the final verdict here is that companies are definitely privy to the fact that if they make a weird bottle, it's going to pique somebody's interest. They're gonna pick it up, they're going to try it. 
possibly even buy it if the juice inside really speaks for itself. And this is judging a book by its cover. And I know a lot of these might get dismissed because of how they look, but always smell it for yourself. And just because the bottle might seem quirky, like this one, for example, it actually smells fantastic. I would highly recommend you check this one out, Melanie Martinez Cry Baby. But all in all, there are really, really weird bottles out there. We see it from Carolina Herrera all the way to Paco Rabanne. Paco Rabanne, I think, has a solid reputation for releasing weird bottles, whether it be one million or whatever. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you took something of value. If you did and you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. This way, whenever I do release new videos, it will get delivered straight to your subscription feed and you never need to worry about missing any future fragrance related content. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what is the weirdest bottle you have in your collection. I love you guys. See you next time. Bye.